guys, I'm Carla from Carla Ceramics and in today's video I will be showing you how to make a Christmas angel. I will be making one small one which you can hang in the tree and also a bigger one which you can just put on the table as a nice decoration piece. So without any further ado, let's get started. I start off with a small angel, that's why I only use a little bit of clay. I center the clay, I do this by coating it up and pushing it down. Then I open it up with my middle finger. I do the same as with the Christmas trees which is pushing all the way down to the bed, so that there isn't a bottom. Then I start pulling up the walls, by pushing my hands toward each shoulder while moving upwards. I'm holding a sponge in my right hand. I repeat this multiple times to get the height that I want and to make the walls thinner. Then I start to slowly close the form. The top of the form is going to be the head of the angel, so I already start to make this a bit rounded. To fully close the form at the top, I move my hands towards each other and push the clay towards itself. Then I smooth out the top and flatten it a little. I make the neck by pushing my thumb into the clay. I'm not taking any clay off of it, I'm just pushing it in. If you scratch off the clay, the head might fall off, speaking from experience. <laughs> then I get rid of the slip that's on the piece, by going over it with a sponge. And I cut off some of the excess clay at the bottom with a wooden knife. I use the same knife to make the neck a little bit deeper. And then the small angel is ready to dry. Then I start off with throwing the big angel. I will be making this in a different way than the smaller one. Because I want the head to look like a separate ball, I'm simply going to throw it as a separate piece and attach it later on. So I start off with the body of the angel and again I push all the way down to the throwing bed to get rid of the bottom and then start pulling up the walls. When I have the height that I want and the walls are nice and thin, I start to close the top of the cylinder. I do this by pushing my hands slowly towards each other. I don't close it all the way because I will be attaching the head later on and there needs to be a way that the air can go in and out of the head. I wanted to make the shape of the body a little smaller so I held my hands next to the piece and moved them towards each other while slowly moving upwards. Then I made the piece a bit more fluent by going over it with a straight wooden loamer. And I again got rid of the excess clay at the bottom by using a wooden knife. And I smoothed this out with a sponge and a loamer. It's important to smooth it out all the way down to the bottom because I won't be trimming it. Then I start off with making the head of the bigger angel. When opening it up I make the bottom a bit rounded because it will become a round shaped head. I'm not pushing all the way down to the bed this time. I push my finger on the outside to the bottom to make it a bit more rounded already. I'm actually throwing the head upside down, so the part that's attached to the wheel is going to be the top of the head. When I've built up the walls, I start to close the top of the form again, but I don't close it all the way. The hole that's on top is going to be attached to the hole on top of the body. This way the air can go out of the head while the clay dries and shrinks. I smooth out the piece again and get rid of some excess clay. When the pieces have dried for a day and are leather hard, I am going to smooth out the bottoms and make the wings. As you can see, the small angel got a very thin bottom because of the slip that dried at the bottom. This isn't a problem, you can easily get rid of this by cutting it away with a little knife. This way I make the bottom a bit thinner, which will also make the piece lighter in weight. Then I smooth out the edges on the inside and the outside by using a wet sponge. Then I start with making the wings for the small angel. I use a wooden plank so I won't cut into my table. First I roll out some clay. While doing this I turn the clay around a few times so it doesn't get stuck onto the wood. You could also use a newspaper or a piece of fabric to prevent this from happening. When cutting out the wings I start with a straight line. This is the part where the wing is going to be attached to the angel. Then I cut out the shape of a wing that I like. I held the angel next to it to see if it had the right size. It was a bit too big so I made the wing a bit smaller and got rid of the excess clay. To get both of the wings the exact same size and shape I used the first wing and cut around it like this. Then I used my heat gun to dry both sides of the wings. This will make the difference in dryness between the body and the wings smaller and prevent them from cracking. Then I used a sponge to smooth out the edges of the wings and I go over it with my finger to make it even smoother. I do this on both sides and with both of the wings. Then I start attaching the wings to the body of the angel. I first hold the wing where I want to place it and then mark this spot by making a line with my needle tool. I scratch this part with this seam tool. And I apply some vinegar and scratch it again. After this I press the wing against the same spot and make sure that it is straight. 
I smooth out the attached part by going over it with the brush with vinegar. And then I do the exact same thing with the other wing. Make sure that the wing will be attached at the same height as the other wing. You can decide yourself how close you want the wings to be together. I again mark where I'm going to attach the wing, scratch this part, apply vinegar, scratch again, push the wing against it and smooth it out with the vinegar brush. Because I want to hang this piece in my Christmas tree, I'm making a hole at the top, so that I can easily hang it with a piece of rope. Then the small angel is finished and ready to dry before biscuit fire. Over to the bigger angel. I start with trimming the head. For this I put it in my giving grip and start making it as round as possible. I start with using a small trimming tool and later on make it nice and smooth with a bigger trimming tool. Then I smooth it out with a sponge. Get rid of the slip and go over it with my finger to smooth it out even more. Then I cut off the body of the angel and get rid of the excess clay at the bottom by cutting this away with a little knife and also smooth out the whole bottom with a wet sponge. I place the head of the angel on top of the body to see where I want to attach it. Try to get it as much into the middle as possible. Then I mark this spot by going over it with my needle tool. I scratch this part, add some vinegar and scratch it again and press the head on top of it. And I go over it again with the vinegar brush. Then I start making the wings. I do this the same way as with the smaller ones, but bigger. So I cut out one wing, check if it has the right size and shape, and then cut out the other wing. I blow dry both of the wings on both sides and smooth out all of the edges with a wet sponge. Then I take a look to see where I want to attach the wing. If the body is a bit rounded and your wing is not, you can easily bend it a little bit by pushing it onto the body. After this, I mark where I want to attach it, scratch it, apply vinegar, scratch it again and press on the wing. Make sure it is straight. The bigger the wing, the harder this gets. And then I smooth out the creases again with the vinegar brush. Then I attach the second wing in the same way. And then the big angel is finished as well and ready to dry before biscuit fire. I decided to glaze both of the angels with the glaze Honey Flux from Emiko. It might seem a bit of a boring color, but for these pieces I wanted the attention to go to the shape and not the glaze. But you can of course use any glaze you want. I applied three even coats. Then what I always do is get rid of the bit of glaze that's on the bottom by twisting the piece onto a wet piece of fabric. And this is what the angels look like after they have been fired. That was it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked it and you learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And if you're going to make these angels yourself and you're going to post them on Instagram, please tag me, Cobble Ceramic, so I can see your angels because I would love to see them. I hope to see you in the next video, bye!